It's a common problem these days with stores that are using meta fields a lot that some products will have that meta field filled out and other products will not. For example, this multivitamin product, it has an ingredients list and this is populated by the meta field on that product. But other products like these leggings, they don't have ingredients. And so I've left the meta field empty, uh, but the actual collapsible row block is still showing up just because like the contents of it are empty. It doesn't mean that this entire block will be hidden. Another common problem is a similar situation that people have with image banners. So here I have a protein powders collection. Let's say that it's the uh, best selling collection on my supplement store. And so I've added an image banner using a image meta field, but uh, I have a vitamins collection and this is like not such a big deal, not my best selling collection. So I don't care about adding an image banner for it. I just want to hide this section completely on this collection, but I still want it showing up on my protein collection. So how do I tell Shopify that based on if my image meta field is filled out, show or hide this entire section? In both of these cases, the solution currently proposed by Shopify is that you have to create different templates for each one of these um, products where the design is slightly different, even if it's just a small thing like hiding a product block. And the problem with that is just that some stores already have a lot of templates. And then if they start creating more based on small design changes like that, you can have 10 different templates. And then when you want to make updates to your design, using the sidebar here, you have to go through each one of your templates and do it again and again on each template. So ideally you would have as few templates as possible on your store and small things like this should be handled some other way. I'm sure that Shopify eventually will release some kind of fix for this. You will be able to conditionally show or hide this depending on the value of a meta field. But right now we have to find a different solution and the solution I'll show you today is by adding some code into the custom liquid block or the custom liquid section right here. So you don't have to edit your theme code or anything. It's going to be quite straightforward and simple. And it's also easy to update your theme later on because this gets saved as settings rather than, you know, modifying your theme code, which sometimes prevents you from updating your theme. The reason I showed you two different examples in the beginning is because one is a section and the other one is a block. And I'm going to start with showing you the solution for the section because that's a little bit easier. And then we're going to move on to the block. Okay. I think the easiest solution for this is to hide this section with CSS. If the meta field is empty, we can quite easily write a few lines of code that do that. First, by adding a custom liquid block, I'm going to move it right at the top or just anywhere near the section that you want to affect. Not because this has any kind of uh, actual effect, but just because uh, so they're together, you know, so you can find them easily in future. And I'm going to add style tags in here. So currently we're writing HTML. When you add style tags like this, then you can write CSS in between those style tags. And first, I'm just going to hide this, I'm just going to hide the section. And how do I do that? Let's just open up this section in a new tab. And I'm going to inspect and I want to find the section ID. In Shopify, every section is going to be inside a section like this. Okay, some are divs, some are not sections. But anyway, this is a section and it has an ID and this also has an ID. So let's copy this ID. We're going to type hash, which is how you target an ID in CSS. And then we're going to paste that in. So now we're targeting this element. Let's open up curly braces, which is where we write our CSS. And we're simply going to write display none like this display colon none semicolon. And that hides the entire section. Now this white space here, this is just from the padding on this custom liquid section. Just remove that entirely. So that's done. Let's save that for now. As you will see, 
obviously it's it's hiding the section on the protein collection as well which we don't want this is where we're gonna add a check to see if the meta field is filled out to do that we need the namespace and key of the meta field so let's check that edit meta field of the image banner um, let's go to the definition and I'll see that it's custom dot banner underscore image. So here's the code that I'm going to write. Open up curly brace percentage sign. This is how you write logic in liquid. And we're going to write if collection dot meta fields dot custom dot banner underscore image this is this is what we saw just now on the definition, right? Is equal to blank. Sorry, blank. And then we're going to wrap that entire style tag inside the if statement. So we're putting the end if at the end. And now you can see our protein uh, banner again. So it's saying that if that meta field is blank, I'll put this style, the CSS, which hides the section. So in this case, on the protein, uh, on the protein collection, it's not blank. It's filled out. So nothing happens. This is not output. And now let's check the vitamins collection. And because that meta field is blank, the CSS is output and the CSS is hiding the section. Now let's look at the block example with hiding this ingredients block on the leggings product, not just on the leggings product, but on all products that don't have the ingredients filled out. I'm looking at my leggings product in the theme editor and I'm just going to add a block this time, a custom liquid block. And let's go into here. And first let's add our condition. So I'm just going to output a word like the word test if the meta field is blank. First thing we've got to do is check that, um, that meta fields namespace and key. Remember? So here's our meta field. Go to definition and it's just custom dot ingredients. So let's go back here, back to our code, and I'm going to write some liquid logic. It's going to say if product, not collection this time, if product dot meta fields dot custom dot ingredients is double equals blank. And I'll just close that if statement with an end if. And in here, I'm just going to write the word test or something or one, two, three or whatever you want. Um, and you should see that's output. And that means that, yeah, it's blank, right? If you didn't see this, then it means that the meta field is filled. Let's test that. If we refresh this multivitamin product now, we won't see that test one, two, three. If we refresh these leggings, we see test one, two, three. All right, so that means that our condition is working. Now, what do we output here? Previously, we had style tags for CSS. And what we did is we got the ID of the section, right? Section and then whatever ID it was. And we say display none, like so. Now, the problem here is that blocks don't have an ID. So if we inspect this ingredients block right now, not just the text, but the entire block, let's just click here, hover over the entire thing. This is the summary. This is the details, details and summary. That's an accordion in HTML. Um, and here we have the entire, the entire thing. Yeah. The accordion, one accordion and the second accordion, the shipping information accordion. And we don't have anything unique to actually target here. We could, for example, target the product underscore accordion class. We could do this dot for a class product underscore underscore accordion display none. And that would hide it. But that hides both. It's not unique to the ingredients accordion. It hides the, inf the shipping information accordion as well. So how do we target the exact one that says ingredients? Well, the only way to do that is with JavaScript. So let's remove these style tags. And actually what we're going to use is script tags. And JavaScript is a little bit more complex. 
But luckily, we live in 2023 and we have AI to help us. A lot of people think ChatGPT is kind of like a gimmick. A lot of other people are overly optimistic about it and think it's going to take our jobs. I don't think so, but I think that it does give an opportunity for uh, people like you who are not web developers, but maybe entrepreneurs, business owners who know a little bit of code uh, to do a lot more. So let me explain what I've asked ChatGPT here. It's actually generated the perfect code. But first, let me just explain um, what I actually prompted. I had a look at the structure of these accordions and I saw that the ingredients is contained inside a heading with the class of accordion title. You see that accordion title. And so with JavaScript, we can check if an accordion title contains the word ingredients, then let's do something with that. And if you remember, we got this, the whole block has a class of product underscore underscore accordion like that. So in other words, here's what we want to do in JavaScript for each accordion title for each accordion title, check if it contains the text ingredients. And if it does, then hide the parent element, which has a class of product accordion. Does that make sense for each meaning check every accordion if you have 10 of them? Well, more like five, then it'll check each one. And if it finds one that has ingredients in the title, then it's going to go ahead and hide the parent element with the class of product accordion. So that's all I wrote. And here ChatGPT has given me pretty much the ideal code to do this. Let me run through this code really quickly. It even adds comments so you can understand it. First, it defines a new variable accordion titles, and it gets all of them adds them to an array. And then it loops through this array. So accordion titles for each title. Um, if the title text content includes ingredients, makes sense, right? If the title includes the word ingredients, find the parent accordion and closest means that it's going to be the parent of this element, not like not a different product accordion, but of this element. And then if it does find it, then it's simply going to set the CSS style to display none. Okay, so like the same as what we were doing before with the section, except now we're doing it with JavaScript. Now, one final thing is that we want this to run when the page loads. So like after the accordions have finished loading on the page, then we want that code to run. Otherwise, they might not have finished loading and uh, it won't find anything. So I simply said run this on page load and it's wrapped this in a document um, DOM content loaded function. Right. And that basically checks that the page has finished loading, then run this code, which hides that block. So let's copy this code and simply paste this in between the script tags. Let's save. And as you can see, once this has refreshed, we don't see the accordion anymore. Let's refresh here and we see our ingredients accordion. Let's refresh here and we only see our shipping information accordion. One final annoying little issue that you may have noticed is that we don't have this top border anymore on this accordion. We have it here, um, but here it's gone. And that's because this is actually the second accordion item, which doesn't have a top border. This one has a top border and a bottom border. Anyway, this is only a problem if you're specifically doing this on dawn theme to the accordions, right? And I'll show you my solution just so that you can maybe learn from this example, but this will be different for every theme. So my solution for this will be that because I know that the issue is that we've simply hidden this. It's like still on the page, but we've just hidden it. And this is still the second one. This actually needs to be the first one. So it's better if we completely delete that from the page, right? So in our JavaScript, instead of saying, um, instead of saying dot style dot display none for the parent accordion, we actually just need to write dot remove like this. And that will completely remove that first accordion from the page for these products. And so now let's refresh here. Everything is fine as usual. Let's refresh here. And we've got that top border back because now 
this is the only accordion here this is the first one okay so that's just an example of how I solve these kinds of problems as they come up like this was something that I didn't expect in this tutorial you can see that it's quite a simple fix and that's all for today guys so this entire tutorial is actually a newsletter post that I did more than a month ago now if you're interested in seeing stuff like this that I may or may not post on YouTube then definitely join my newsletter just go to ed.codes to join and also this was a question from one of my patrons. I've started a Patreon recently and Patreon allows you to chat with me and I'm very happy to create custom content for my patrons. So check out my Patreon as well. You find the link in the description of the video if you're interested in that. That's all for today. See you guys next time.